Hi friends, welcome to the part two of my talk on bed forms and crossbeds. So we'll look at the anatomy of a crossbed. A crossbed is comprised of three sections. The top set, the four sets, and the bottom set. The top set is the low angled um, upper portion, uh, which is often um, eroded. Uh, so for the most case, we, when we go to the, uh, the field or the outcrop, um, it's not very common that you find them preserved. The faucet, on the other hand, is actually the main part of the crossbed, which is usually preserved, uh, makes up a huge portion of the crossbed, uh, and uh, has the highest amount of uh, inclination relative to the underlying uh, units. The bottom set is, the, is uh, for the most case, sub -par uh, parallel to the bedding, the basal bedding plane, and it kind of down laps uh, onto the basal uh, bedding planes. So we'll look at some representation or some uh, expressions of you know, cross beds and outcrops. Um, firstly, uh, we look at the planar, uh, also called the tabular cross bed. So these are generated by the migration of large scale, um, you know, oftentimes straight crest bed forms. Uh, so the other representation uh, of cross bed is uh, in the form of trough cross bed. So these are similar conditions uh, as planar cross beds, but the difference here is that they are formed during the migration of, um, you know, curved, uh, you know, uh, crest uh, bed forms. So in other words, the dunes or the ripples that actually uh, created or creates trough cross beds have, you know, wavy or curved crests. Another representation is in the form of herringbone uh, cross beds. So no, herringbone is the name of a fish. Uh, so the, 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 I think it stems from the name, the the shape of the bone kind of shows you have uh, lines dipping in opposite directions, in this case, above and below a central or a middle line. So I think the name of the herring bone is actually derived from the name of that fish. So they generally form in tidal environments and it kind of indicates um, you know, where you have reversal in current trend. So you have current moving in one direction at a point in time and then in second another time it's reversed. So this is just a, a simple uh, expression or example of how that happens. Uh, you have in, let's say in phase, first phase, you have a flow in this direction from left to right. Uh, everything on the left has been eroded and deposited on the right. And then you see the direction of the blue uh, line, which represent the first set of cross beds. And then you have another cycle uh, during which you have another phase of flow um, in which the current direction is from left, from right to left. And that would be the green Set of that, so that deposits a green um, set of cross beds. So overall, that just gives you a hint of how these herringbone cross beds are formed. So it just tells us you have a reversal or swash and backswash currents during tidal um, conditions. So another expression is in the form of sigmoidal uh, cross bed. Now this, you know, take the form of a very lazy or a weak um, S, all right, or like the backbone X. So they form in, you know, similar tidal uh, deposits, but typically you find that they are like clay draped, uh, you know, fine sands with laminated deposits, also typical, like I said, in tidal uh, settings. So another very interesting uh, feature we see uh, in uh, outcrops uh, will be reactivation uh, surfaces. Now this is like a, an erosional surface that separates two sets of cross beds, another one set below and another set above. So the one set below actually truncated by the erosional surface and the set above actually down lap uh, onto the erosional surface. So I'll just give you a quick um, example of how that happens. So firstly, in this case, you have a first episode where you have construction and that would be deposition. So supposing you have current moving in this case from left to right. Um, so what it is saying is that you have two at the same time that you have, you know, deposition or construction, there is another um, weaker phase of tide, which actually moves in the opposite direction, but not strong enough to erode what has been deposited. So supposing that at a point, uh, the um, tide, tidal current going from the left to the right uh, gets weakened, you now have a destruction phase. That means the very um, subtle uh, opposite trending uh, tidal uh, energy becomes active or rather becomes dominant and erodes part of what has been deposited. Now that is not saying the current has changed direction. It's only saying the dominant uh, direction weakened and then what was not, not dominant had become 
uh, very active in, or rather very uh, effective in eroding part of what has been deposited. So in the third cycle, uh, let's assume in this third cycle, the energy now picks up again. You have a new flow and increased energy. And then you now have the advancement of, you know, the four set planes, which in this case had a green uh, line. So that just showing, so you now, in other words, you now have an erosional surface separating the first set of cross beds dipping left to right. And then another set similar, dipping in the same direction, but kind of, you know, truncated at the reactivation surface. So another expression uh, is of, of cross bed units will be in the form of festoon, what we call the festoon cross bed. Now these are formed uh, by uh, movement of mounded uh, bed forms, mounded dunes and ripples, which kind of you know cut into each other, and that's typical of sometimes in in uh, environments where you have either you have wave moving very you know intermittently uh, in different directions, or like in the deserts. Uh, or arid environments where you have similar uh, behaviors for the way, where, where the dunes and the ripples, you know, cut into each other uh, at intervals. So the last uh, expression I'll be showing uh, is the Humoki and Swally cross strata. Now these are not sensu stricto tidal. These are not tidal um, indicators. Rather, um, the for the most case we prefer to use the word cross stratification, not cross beds. Um, the Humoki uh, and the Swally cross strata are generally uh, storm uh, indicators, you know, they form in, you know, shallow marine environments where you have the, um, you know, like you have um, hurricanes, you know, which comes up with this energy and deposits uh, sediments that actually can survive at that amount of energy or that wave uh, strength. So for Himoki and Swali uh, cross rather, you normally have the, the, sometimes you have the pair complete, sometimes you have one set. The upper half of it, which is like the concave down part of it, is the humoc. It's called a humoc. Uh, and then the lower half, which is concave up, is a swale, or some call it the swally uh, cross strata. Overall, in terms of dimensions, you actually see the humoc's cross stratification has, uh, it takes like an amplitude of about, you know, 20, 30 centimeters. And in terms of um, wavelength, uh, laterally, you can have up to about a meter or sometimes more. So there are other expressions uh, that we see. Uh, in this case, uh, I'll show you what we call the lenticular beds. Uh, now these are, you know, by convex or you know, lens-shaped sands uh, deposited in the mass of, or you find them in the mass of, you know, muddy uh, units. So in this case, the dominant lithology here is the mud, or rather the mud rock, and uh, we're saying here that they are formed in, you know, slack water conditions or where you have very low velocity water conditions such that you know the muddy particles begin to suspended uh, muddy particles will begin to slowly accumulate and in case you know very few um you know sand uh, 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 masses that are present um, they also you also a typical of rhythmic environments which is similarly like we said in tidal settings we have repetitions of tide, high tide and low tide, but in this very case, it's during the uh, low velocity uh, conditions, which deposits dominantly the mods. So the key thing here is that the, the, the sands take the, the shape of a lens or lenticles. That's why they call lenticular sands. So there is another case of, um, well, it's like a flip from, from the lenticular. In this case, we now have the flasa beds. So the flasa beds are saucer-shaped, um, you know, mods or clays. Sometimes you see them as streaks uh, in actually a dominantly sandy unit. So they actually uh, are typical of, you know, conditions where the tidal, uh, you know, flow has been alternating. So in this very case, you have like a period where you have largely, largely sand, and you have actually mud streaks at boundaries between uh, individual um, sand beds. Um, you often find them in tidal environments, but very rarely in um, fluvial point bars and some ephem ephemeral uh, streams. Uh, so thank you. Uh, that's all I, I have for this, this uh, part of the discussion. Uh, if you have questions or you know, contributions, suggestions, ideas, just do me an email. I'll be glad to respond. Uh, hopefully in the next um, you know, episode, 
or the part three of this talk, I'll be showing you some outcrop pictures or outcrop examples. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much for your time and for listening. I do hope it was worth your time. Um, hopefully, we will, we will connect again next time. Thank you. It's Ifan Yobi.